Welcome to part one of a video build log for the Dynam turbojet model. The Dynam is available in a lot of places around the United States and around the world. I ordered this model from nitroplanes.com. Nitroplanes is on the west coast. I'm in Phoenix, ordered it on a Sunday afternoon and on Thursday the UPS man had it at my door. Not too bad. It came in a rugged cardboard shipping carton that fit the box that you see here, kind of like an envelope. It was not packed in a large box with packing foam and that kind of thing. The box had some scuffs and dings on it, like you'd expect from going through the shipping process, but this box, the model itself, came out looking really good. So, let's take a minute and look inside. On top of the model is a sheet of Dynam decals. I've worked with these before, and they're pretty good. They're colorful and they have a nice appearance. They're pretty sticky too. We'll talk more about that when it comes time to apply them. In the box itself, you'll find the model, a couple of spacer boxes, and what I, what I assume will be the wings box mounted at the bottom of this box. So let's take a closer look at what's inside. Let's start by taking a look at the spacer boxes. This one's got something in it. Okay, got a couple of plastic parts box, uh, pieces here. We've got the landing gear, nose gear with uh, some spring, springiness to it, little scissors there for a nice scale appearance if you're choosing to use those. We've got the main landing gear. There's a plastic parts piece here that have the hinges and the push rods and the control horns for the flaps. Flaps are an option for this model and I'm planning to use those so I don't want to lose them. In this bag, there's a, a plug, a wing uh, mounting screw, and some glue, which I assume is contact cement. Uh, and so I want to keep track of that as well. And then last is this round plug that's going to fit in the bottom of the wing. And I'll show you that uh, here in just a couple of minutes. Let's take the, uh, the fuselage out of the box and take a look at that first thing to notice with fuselage is it came through the shipping process in a really good shape. There's not really any nicks or bruises on this. It's made of EPO or exp expanded polyolefin type foam, so it's got a very smooth, very nice finish. The uh, windows are molded into the sides uh, as well as are the doors. The motor component here, I'll put that in view is screwed onto the, um, the main part of the fuselage. And I like twin models, and so it's got a pair of, of um, 64 millimeter fans. And one of the things I like to do is kind of give these little fans a spin. These spin very well. You know, occasionally um, when you get these uh, inexpensive models that the, uh, you'll see some uh, rubbing or hear or feel some rubbing of the impeller against the shroud or the outside case of the EDF unit. That's usually pretty easy to deal with. Uh, just start by taking the, uh, the screw out of the center of the impeller, pull the impeller off, and then you'll see probably the least precise part of the whole building process, and that was when some person mounted the motor into the, um, the EDF unit. And sometimes they get them a little bit off center. That's pretty easy to fix. Just loosen uh, the motor screws, center the motor as well as you can. And then what I like to do is uh, you know, tightening back and forth until I get the motor tight, um, check to see that it's balanced. And then one at a time, I'll take the motor screw back out, put a drop of the blue or the less uh, sticky Loctite on the motor screw and then screw it back in. Um, vibrations in the motor in the EDF unit will eventually cause that to fail and so I want to make sure that that's nice and tight. But in this case, it seems like it's in good shape. Uh, we'll find out more when we um, uh, apply power and get it spinning at a higher RPM. Along the back, you'll see that there, the push rods are installed and coming through. Uh, there are push rods for both the left and the right elevator and for the rudder that come back from the, um, uh, from the, the main component or the main uh, hatch uh, cavity in the fuselage. Now one of the things I thought was a little odd about this model is the 
is the black paint on the canopy piece. I'll take this canopy off. It fits nice and snug. It has a little um, lip around the back and then a magnet in the front, which is pretty typical for this kind of application. Uh, and then there's space there for the battery that, that fits right here. Now, one of the things that is odd is this black uh, canopy. The picture on the box, the pictures on the website show that the, uh, uh, this windscreen area is clear. Um, I'm not sure what the story is with the black, but uh, while I was wa waiting for the model to arrive, uh, I did some um, searching for images on Google Images, and, uh, and I didn't see any of these kind of models. This is essentially a model of a Citation II uh, with black um, uh, canopy. And so I'm going to scuff this up, mask this area off, and then hit it with probably some white Krylon or something like that so that it better matches the rest of the model and looks more realistic. Let's take a quick look at the bottom here of the model. I'm going to turn it around so you can see. So in the, um, the cavity for the um, under the wing, you can see that we've got the servos mounted. This is the elevator servo. It's got a pair of push rods, as I mentioned in the back. So that single uh, servo controls the uh, elevator. Here is the rudder servo, and it's got a quick connector connected to a push rod leading to the front for nose wheel steering, and I can see the end of that here. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. And then the heavier rod going back to the rudder. Also, you may be able to see back in this area, there are a pair of uh, what appear to be pretty substantial um, ESC electronic speed controls uh, that are just kind of laying in there. They got nowhere to go, so uh, I'm sure that's fine. And uh, so they've got a pair of those, one for each of the motors turning the electric ducted fans. Now, the other thing that I wanted to point out to you here in the front is that this is uh, set for the stock nose gear. And if you're going to put the nose gear in, there's a plastic mounting plate in there, screws in the bag. You can just drop this guy in very, very easily. Um, however, I'm not planning to use the stock landing gear. I'm planning to put retracts on the model. And so one of the things I found very helpful is the fact that in the area for our retracts, they have plugs molded in and just assembled. So I can take this plug out and I have a nice area uh, for the retract. And I'm hoping that I'm not even going to have to remove much foam as I um, uh, put the retract assembly into the, um, into the space provided. So that's, um, that's a real nice feature. And again, I'm just really impressed with the smooth uh, nature of the foam, the vent, the vent marks that you often see on foam models, uh, there just don't seem to appear to be uh, many with this model at all. So it's looking real good so far. The other box that was the spacing box that we looked at a few minutes ago, I believe it's empty, it feels empty. Yep, nothing in that, so we can discard that. Uh, this is the ARF model of the um, of the airplane, and so uh, that box may have held the battery or battery charger if you had chosen to get the um, uh, ready-to-fly version of the kit. The last box here in the, the model's box is what I'm assuming is the wings. That's the only big part that's left. So let's take a look here. To start with, we've got the tail feathers got the vertical stabilizer. It has a molded foam uh, hinge. The um, control horn is connected here with an easy connector. And it screws in to the, um, the main assembly of the fuselage, so I'm not going to have to deal with a lot of glue on this. And then here are the um, horizontal stabilizers and they're looking pretty good here. Uh, they too have got molded foam hinges, so we'll flex those a little bit when we get to the building process. On the bottom, they've got the control horn mounted again with a, uh, an easy connector, and so getting them straight and um, uh, aligned properly when the, uh, the servo is centered and then just tightening down on the control rod is gonna make this assembly really go quickly. One of the other things you'll notice is that here along the edge, it's got a bevel, and you may recall if you've looked at Citation uh, 2 airplanes, 
that they have a bit of dihedral in the tail. And so uh, if you remember that the, the control horns go down, this will fit nicely in there and have that nice citation appearance when you mount the um, horizontal stabilizers. Last but not least are the wings. And again, the surface of the wing is very smooth, very nice, it goes along with the rest of the model that we've been discussing and is just a real nice appearance to it. Uh, on the bottom side of the wing, as you can see, they're both right here. Um, the servo is uh, installed, the wire goes down um, a mounting track uh, in, that's molded into the foam. Again, the servo is mounted with an easy connector on the control horn, which is going to allow uh, easy adjustment for the, uh, or the aileron in this case when the radio servo, uh, centers the servo. Uh, again, the landing gear just snaps into uh, a fixture here, but I'm not going to be using these stock landing gear. I'll get that over here so you can see it. Um, instead, I'll be removing this plate that's screwed in. And then another nice feature, as I've mentioned before, is that even for the landing gear, there are cutouts that have been applied. And so I'll just be able to pry out those pieces of foam and have uh, the space for the strut and for the wheel as it recesses into the wing when it's retracted. The last cutout that's available is right here, and that's for uh, a plug for the flap servo. Now I have those servos on hand and I'm going to be using the flaps. So using the plastic parts that came in the, um, uh, the parts kit, I'll be mounting the hinges, uh, the control horns, uh, prying out the plug for the servo, and then it's got the uh, um, uh, wire areas already uh, molded into the plastic or into the foam here. So it, it's going to go together really well, I'm sure. You can also see along the top here that uh, there's a, a spar mounted in there, fiberglass or carbon fiber. I can see in the light that it goes almost from the tip of the wing uh, on the, at the root side to almost to the tip side. So it covers this whole area of the wing to give it some strength. Now it doesn't go through to the other wing, but uh, I don't think that'll be a problem. I'm not planning to try 3D with this little uh, biz jet, so uh, I think it'll provide plenty of strength. And then the last thing I plan to do is uh, spend a little bit of time, probably use a bit of a hacksaw blade to cut a channel out to the wingtip where I plan to install some LED lights. I bought a, an LED light kit and so I'll have LEDs, uh, nav lights on the wingtips and then I'll again take a uh, look at some of the images on Google Images to see where along the um, uh, leading edge we would put a, uh, a landing light where, so I can mount that landing LED. So all in all, the wings look pretty, uh, pretty nicely done, and it looks like they're going to be pretty easy to deal with and be able to make this a really nice, um, really nice assembly process. Well, the last thing in the box are the instructions. It's got a nice picture, color picture of the airplane so you can have a sense of where the uh, decals are going to be placed. Some instructions on how to program the electronic speed controls. Uh, probably end up uh, doing that via the radio. I've got a couple of the card type programmers. Maybe one of them will work uh, for this band, brand of ESC, so we'll be hopeful about that. And then the typical instruction manual with uh, photos showing the, um, the elements of the assembly. So right now, I'm going to spend a little time with the instructions and see if there's any interesting things I'm going to need to be aware of as I get ready to put together the Dynam turbojet.